Let's make a simple craft caddy using a cardboard box. Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Don't throw that cardboard out. We can turn it into useful craft storage. Stay tuned. Yo, welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you all so much for choosing to be here today. We get cardboard boxes at my house all the time, whether it's from Amazon or some other source. We always seem to have a bunch of cardboard boxes. And I have some boxes that are this size that I've been holding on to for a while. And I thought that it might be a great opportunity to take one of these and some scrap pieces of cardboard and make a really nice craft caddy. Y'all, this is going to be a really inexpensive project, but it's one of those things that we can definitely use in our crafty spaces. So I'm going to flip to my overhead camera because y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So what I have here is a cardboard box that ordinarily would go into recycling, but we crafters can always use additional storage. So I'm going to do a measurement of this box really quickly. And it looks like it is nine inches. And I'm doing a rough measurement by three by six. Exact measurements won't matter because it'll be the process that I'm more interested in. So we're going to take this box and we're going to very quickly transform it into something useful in our crafty spaces. It might not be the most beautiful box we've ever made, but it will be a very useful one. So the first thing that I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm just going to take some tape. I am not going to go through the process of tearing off these little flaps. I'm just going to make them a part of the box and I'm just going to add some tape. Now you can take yours off if you want, but I am just adding tape. See how I added that tape there? On this piece, I am going to cut through and cut off the fold-in flap because I really don't want to work with that. And so now that I have my tape on these pieces, I'm going to go ahead and just peel away the tape backers. And we're just going to take all of these pieces and fold them in. Now, if you want to secure these with your glue gun, you can, but I'm finding that my tape is holding. My apologies if you hear the landscaping crew. It is landscaping day for the complex. And now let's do our last one. I want all of mine folded in. I'm not going to have a piece um, sticking up for a back platform. I want it all folded in like this. Now I do have a little ridge here. So I am just going to take my scissors and just go across and try to even this. It's not going to be perfect, but I do want to get rid of the difference in height. Like that. All right, y'all, so there are several ways that you can do this. And what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to use some more of the sheet paper that I have been printing. Now, I will have more sheet paper available on my website this week. I don't have this ready for the website yet, but this will be a part of a collection that I'll put out on the website. But I am going to use these papers to cover the box. And I'm going to need two pieces because one piece is not big enough. So what I'm going to do is I can take these papers and run them through my Xyron Creatopia to get the adhesive on the back or I can use tape and place my tape on the box to lay down the paper. And since everyone does not have a Xyron Creatopia, I am going to go with the taping method. Now, some of you are going to say, I hear it all the time, that is a lot of tape you're using. It is going to be a lot of tape that I'm using, but this is the method that I'm choosing to use right now. Ordinarily, I would use my Creatopia 
but I know that not everyone has that, so we're going to do it using tape. Now you can try using a wet glue on this. I really don't like to use a wet glue on cardboard specifically because the cardboard can on occasion warp. So I am just using my tape and I'm okay with using my tape. I don't have my wider tape available. I have some on order. So I am using my one inch tape. Now, if you have another way that you want to try, by all means, y'all, please go ahead and give your way a try. I will never say that my way is the only way or the way that you have to do it. This is just one of those things that I choose to do this way. You might not. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take this and we're going to place it down like this. It's right here in the middle. And I'm just going to peel away my tape backer. If you have a favorite wrapping paper, that's great for this project. You don't need the sheet papers that I'm using here. You can use any rolled paper or wrapping paper that you might have in your stash. And if you've been with me for a while, I know that you have some wrapping paper. And I know that you have some wallpaper. So I'm going to take this and we're just going to place it down like this. I'm going to flip it over. And so what we're going to do, y'all, is we're going to miter the ends. So I'll cut in this way and we'll be cutting out this way. And we'll do this on the bottom pieces and then I'll show you how we do the top. So I am just going to follow my cut here. And y'all truly, when I say that this is not going to be perfect, this is not going to be perfect, but it'll just be a way that we can take and recondition some cardboard. So now we're going to need to take this piece and we're going to fold it under. Put my tape right there. And then I will peel away the tape backer. We're going to take this piece and we bring it over. And we're going to fold it over like this cardboard so you might have some wrinkling on the bottom so now we have our front that looks like this let's turn it so that it's facing you and now we're going to make a cut this way and a cut this way Just go ahead and cut. And then we'll be taking this piece and we're going to fold it over on the inside. So again, I'm going to take my tape. And I'm only placing down a couple of strips of tape. So let's go ahead and peel this. Stand it up and let's fold it in. Now I'm going to take my big old spatula, go on the inside and get this stuck. Now this is the most that we're going to be doing to the inside. We're going to leave the rest at the bottom raw. So now we can take this piece and we fold it over like this and then we're going to fold it in. So all I'm going to do is take this and mark where I need to cut, right here on the corner. So now I'll take my tape 
we'll add a couple of pieces of tape here and we'll fold over. Let's peel the tape from here. So now we can take this piece and fold it over like that. Then we can stand it up and fold that inside like that. Go in with our big old spatula or bone folder, whatever it is you choose to use. Ruler will work and we're going to get that nice and stuck. So let's do the same thing over here. So we take this piece, we're going to fold it over like this. And then here in the corner, we're going to make a mark with our pen or pencil, whatever you want to use. And I'm just going to make myself a nice little line because now I know this is where I want to cut. So I am just going to take my finger blade and I'm going to cut and then we'll cut out this piece. So now I can take my tape. We're going to put our tape here at the top because we don't have any. And then we can peel away the tape that we do have on the cardboard. And y'all, we're ready to put this down. Can you see how easy this is and how easily it comes together? I can even see doing this with boxes for gift baskets. If you have some old cardboard boxes and you make gift baskets, why not take those cardboard boxes, some fun paper, and turn it into a really usable gift box. So now I'm pulling this over. We'll stand this up and I'm going to pull this in like this. Go ahead and use my big old spatula. Get that nice and stuck on the inside. So see how it's looking so far? I think it's looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to peel away a little bit of the backer strips so that we can get these pieces that are hanging over. I want them folded and stuck to the box. So I am just pulling away some of the tape backer. So now I can take this little piece here, fold it over like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we're going to take this piece and fold it over, getting it nice and stuck. So now we're going to take this piece. I am just going to cut off a portion of this because we don't need all of it. So I am just going to take my finger blade and I'm going to cut off a portion like this. And then when I put this down, I'll be able to wrap around on the side and fold over. So I am going to go ahead and remove this tape backer. I do need to take some tape and we need to put our tape here. And I need to put some tape right here. So now I'm going to take this piece and we're simply going to put it down like this. And we're going to do the same thing that we did here on the front. We're going to cut in here at the bottom and then I'll cut out on the side and we're doing just a partial wrap because we already have it wrapped but I am just making sure that I have the whole thing covered so I will have some side seams and y'all that's okay with me I am more than fine with that. So I'm going to take my tape, place my tape here on this bottom flap, peel away that backer. And I'm going to fold this over on the bottom. 
bottom isn't too pretty. But we'll fix that in a minute. Then here at the top, again, I'm going to just angle here. And I'm going to angle right here. Angle right there. And, and right here. So now we can take a piece of tape, place that tape right here. And fold this over like that. So now we're going to take another piece of tape and we're going to put that piece on this side. If you had one long sheet of wrapping paper, you can do this without having seams, but I'm using my longer paper, the 11 by 17, and I like being able to make my own papers to place them down. So we're going to put that right there. And now we just need to add tape here and we fold over. Stand this up, put it in, and let's get that stuff. So even if we stopped right now, y'all, we have a really cute caddy, but we're not done yet. So I'm going to use a piece of my scrap cardboard and we're going to create a little platform for this. So all I'm going to do is put it down like this. I'm not going to be doing any measuring, but I can see where I want to cut, kind of sort of following the line on the cardboard. So now, I want to remove some of this. So I am just going to make myself a little pencil drawing or pen drawing. And I can see my mark right there. All I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take my ruler, place it right there, and then just cut. Now I need to remove this labeling. I'm going to bring in that scrap piece that we had left over. Worked out fine. I didn't expect to have enough, but that worked out very well. And I am going to place down some tape. We're going to take this piece and we're just going to put it down like this, getting that nice and stuck. And then we'll just fold over, do our normal corner mitering. This time I'm just going to use my tape roller, add some tape, now let's see if we can set this on top so that the cardboard doesn't show. So now I'm just going to take some glue, add some glue so that we can get this nice and stuck. We're going to take this, we're going to place it down, and then I'm basically going to be checking 
what I'm checking for is I want to make sure that this is even on all four sides. And when I think that it's even enough for me, I'm just going to press down, grab my long bone folder, go on the inside, get that stuck. The bottom looks like this for right now. I might leave it, or if I have some scrap left over, I'm going to go back and fix it. I could have placed the base of this to cover this, but it wasn't sitting flat, so I decided to do it this way. But y'all, isn't this shaping up to be a really cute caddy? For your craft room your bathroom your desktop wherever you want to put it and like i said this would make a great start to a gift basket all you have to do now is fill it and you already have a beautiful front to it so now i'm going to bring in another scrap piece of cardboard i need to remove that labeling because what i want to try to do is i want to try to make just a little band here that will catch certain items so I'm going to bring in my ruler and I'm going to cut a piece that is about an inch and a half wide and I am going to just grab my piece and here's what I'm planning. I'm planning on taking this and I am just going to cause a little indentation like this, nothing really wide. And I'm going to put it right here because I have some plans for it. So I hope that it will work, but I'm going to go ahead and just trim off right here. So now I'm just going to take some tape, put some tape on here. And we're going to put some tape there peel away the backer and then we're going to put some tape right here let's peel away the backer and then we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it I'm going to put it right here at the bottom but I am going to have a little border here at the top. So I'm just going to cut straight across, remove some of this. Now we can take this and we'll do our mitering. Now I'm going to take my tape and y'all, I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I hope so. And we're going to put our tape right there. Now let's just fold over. So now I'm going to take this end, and I'm going to fold it, and then fold it again, because I want just a little bit of an opening here. I don't want anything thick. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fold over and then just fold over again. So basically I'm following the guides of the cardboard. So I use that to help me decide how I wanted to do this. So now I'm just going to give it a nice little crease on the corner. Ooh, we'll see if it works. I'm going to grab my glue add my glue to the outer flap and so now I'm going to take this and we're going to put it down like this And then we just have to let this dry for a moment. So basically what you want is I have a very, very small slit there. That is what I want. I don't want anything that's really protruding as an opening. I want it to be as narrow as possible and I'll show you why in just a minute. All right, y'all, so we have this piece on. It's nice and stuck. And here's what I was thinking. I was thinking that we can take our scissors, 
and put our scissors in here like this. You can also take your bone folder and put it on like that. Then I thought I might take a couple of my little pin grips and use them as well. So I'm adding some E6000. I'm going to take that pin grip, put one right there. I am going to cut these in the middle like that. Take some more E6000, put it on the back. Let's go ahead and place this one right here. We'll need to let these dry. And I'm going to grab my little baby oil soaked paper towel, y'all, that's all I'm using. And I clean the nozzle and that prevents my lid from sticking because you have that baby oil on there acting as a resist. And this has saved me so much in the way of replacing my E6000. I've been using the same tube for a very long time. I think I've been using the same tube since I first shared this tip with you. And if you wanted to, you could add some of the pin grips going across the front here for additional space. And I am just going to show you how I'm thinking about using my pin grips. So if you have this sitting out on your desk and you want to make sure that you have all of your craftable tools at the ready, why not go ahead and just take those pin grips. And once these two dry, y'all have my scissors, my bone folder, my stylus, and my finger blade ready to go. I do need to let this dry a little bit before we actually even try to stand this up so that I can show you what else we can put on the inside. So we'll have a little ready to go craft station as soon as this has had a chance to set up and dry just a little bit longer. All right, y'all, so these are fairly dry and I can work with them, but I wanted to show this to you because it is fabulous. This used to be an ugly cardboard box and we turned it into a beautiful desktop craft station and I'm going to show you exactly how we can use this. So I have these two here and what I did here at the bottom is I cut off the bases of some erasers and I put them right here so that they could be stoppers for what I'm about to put in here. So we're going to take our scissors and we're going to put our scissors in right there. And then I'll take another pair of scissors and we're going to add those scissors right there. Then we can take our bone folder and we can put the bone folder right there. And I'm going to take some of my clips and put them across the back so that when I need a clip, I'll be able to grab a clip to secure my project. Then I can take my refillable glue bottles and place them right there. And if I had a third one, I could place it there. But here on the side, I added this little handle so that I can do this. We can take our tape and we now have a place to hang our tape. Now, what is this? This is simply one of those plastic Dollar Tree pegboard pegs. And all I did, y'all, was I took my wire nips and then I just applied some pressure to snap it. And you can see how flat that snaps. So I did it on both sides. It'll take a little bit of pressure, but once you get it off, then you're going to have this flat piece. And then I used some hot glue to glue that on. And now I have a place to hang my tape and I'm going to need a place for my glue. So I am just going to do something very, very elementary. And I'm just going to take this and create a little shelf for myself that rhyme. And I'm going to put that shelf right in there. That'll hold my glue bottle. Y'all are making this up on the fly, but I think it's turning out very well. I love it. So I'm just adding some tape here on this little piece. 
I'm not giving measurements because this really is more of a process because your boxes will definitely be a different size for mine, but it will give you an idea of various ways that you can use those boxes. So I'm going to take my paper. We're going to put this down like this. I will have a rough edge showing. Don't let it bother you because it's not bothering me. So I am just going to trim out. So now I can take this and I'm just going to put it in like this. I will have to glue it. So I am going to take my glue and we're going to add glue and I'll have to put some glue on this piece and then some glue and then some glue here. So now I'm going to see if I can pick this up without my hands getting really gluey. We're going to put it in like this. I'll slide it down as far as I want it to go. And then I'm just going to squeeze it. And now y'all, we have a little tray here for my small glue bottles. I can fit two in mine. You might be able to get more in yours depending on the size box that you're using. But look at this. We have our clips here in the back. We have our glue bottles and we have our crafty accessories here on the front along with our tape. The only thing we're missing is craftable paper. So y'all, I'm going to claim it right now. This is my best ever cardboard box makeover. I absolutely love how this turned out. I have everything I need to be able to craft except for the paper. A lot of times I'll go out front to craft. This is going to stay out front because y'all, now all of my crafting accessories will be out there and at the ready when I need them. Y'all, isn't this fabulous? Grab those cardboard boxes and look at them differently. Look at them for what they can become once we cover them with paper and add a few tweaks here and there. I absolutely love this. And I think that when you make one for your craft studio, your bathroom, your desk, wherever you want to put it, I know that you're going to love it. So if you have enjoyed my favorite cardboard box makeover ever, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I hope that seeing the things that we do on this channel, such as this, will convince you to subscribe. If you choose not to subscribe, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. As always, my friends, y'all please be safe, be kind, and be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.